Hey friends, I was just taking Instagram pictures and decided to leave the background up even though that has absolutely nothing to do with this video. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an American born and raised in Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada and <laughs> studied in Utah and I came to France for a study abroad program, met my husband the first week, fell head over heels in love. It took us a few months, you know, to get things going, to work up the courage to kind of ask each other out. We ended up getting there and now we're married. We've got two kids. I still live in France. I've been living in France for quite a few years now, six, seven, I don't know. Do we count the year I studied here or not? Maybe yes, I don't know. But we've got two babies. I have a daughter named Amelia. She is almost four years old. She will be four in April. And then I have my baby Isaac who will be two years old in September. September, which means right now he's almost a year and a half. And I was recently asked a question on Instagram. The person asked it in English, so I assume they wanted this to go up on my English channel. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. I'll maybe try and make a uh, French video as well if I have time today. She said, hi, Patricia. Forgive me if you've already mentioned this in a video, but I wondered how bringing up your children bilingual is going. I gather from your videos that you employ the one parent, one language approach. Is that working well? Is your daughter stronger in French than in English or vice versa? Were her first words in French or English? Does she ever mix the two languages? Could, maybe could you do a video on it as bilingualism is a very interesting topic. I'm assuming this person is an English speaker because their English is impeccable. So if you're French and you wrote this, wow, your English is great. But yes, we more or less do the one parent, one language approach. Now I obviously speak to them in English. My husband has a very scholarly level of English. He's working on it, but he's definitely not bilingual and he's definitely not fluent in English yet but I think um, with just a good kick in the butt, he could get there. He just needs a little bit more motivation, a little bit more work, and maybe in a year or so, he could still be able to speak fluently. But for the moment, he speaks to the kids mostly in French, and I speak to them exclusively in English. First of all, because I'm much more credible in English. I just, I don't make as many grammatical mistakes. And it feels so much more natural to just be speaking in my mother language, my mother tongue. So that is why we chose to do that. Of course, we also wanted our children to be bilingual because wow, like that's, it's so much easier when you start when they're babies, their brains are just ready and they get the accent a lot faster and it's just lots of fun. It's something I definitely wanted for my kids. I'm so glad they're able to do that. For us, it has been an extremely easy process. It has not been complicated. There have no, been no like rough bumps in the road so far. And I would 10 out of 10 recommend. So the one parent, one language approach, if you don't know, that's where each parent talks exclusively in their mother tongue to the children. Laurent, he sometimes speaks in English a little bit because he likes practicing his English for one. And also sometimes, you know, when you're really frustrated with the kids and they're not listening to you and you said it like 10 different ways trying to get them to understand that he, he'll just crack and he'll just say it in English because he gets kind of mad. So English is kind of what he uses when he wants a shortcut, but that doesn't always work either. Sometimes they're just not listening either way. We're living in the South of France, so obviously everyone around us is speaking French. Her grandparents only speak French to her. Um, my parents only speak English to her because they do not speak French and vice versa. Her grandparents do not speak English. And I've noticed that with each pair of grandparents, she will speak exclusively the language with a couple of words, maybe of franglais thrown in there here and there, where she tries to, she doesn't know the word in that language. She'll just be like, all right, if I say this English word with a French accent, does, does may they understand? Yes, no, maybe we'll try it. Like That is completely normal, especially since she's only three, that is, absolutely to be expected of bilingual children. It's not at all a problem and is actually a sign of language sophistication because usually they use it in a way that's grammatically correct, which is something that not even all adults are able to do with two languages. So it's cool, we're, we're happy with her progress there. She started school because in France, they start school around three years old. If you're a French person watching this in the States, they start school around five, four, five, six, that area, depending on when their birthday falls. But in France, it's three, so she started school in September and it's been going really well. That also is obviously only in French. Well, not obviously, maybe we would have put her in an international school. But just like, if you are in France, beware of international schools. There's a few good ones and there's also a lot that are just money banks. They're just there to make lots of money and they, they're they they're terrible. So be careful about which one you choose if you do go down that route. And they're very expensive as well. So definitely make sure you're getting your money's worth. Ask a lot of parents. Ask the teachers kind of like, you know, I don't know, maybe like out of sight of work what it's actually like because I've had good and bad experiences with that. It's definitely something you'll want to check out before spending 400, 500 euros a month on an education. But like I said, Amelia's school is only in French and so she's speaking 
speaking French all day long at school. I talked to her teacher recently just to see how she was doing, how the French was coming along and everything, because now she's speaking in French to the children all day long. She has to speak to her teachers to communicate, and maybe it's a little bit harder than the French that she's speaking at home, just because dad, when he gets a little bit frustrated, sometimes switches to English. And the teacher said it's absolutely great. She understands pretty much everything. The teacher told me sometimes she'll have English words like thrown into her sentences here and there because she doesn't know the French word for something and she still wants to communicate. She just kind of like hopes that that will be uh, the same in French and English. And in her defense, there are a lot of words that are the same. It's just a different accent or you pronounce the end of the word slightly different. Otherwise, it's the same. I think I read that it was somewhere around 70% of <laughs> English and French vocabulary is extremely similar. As far as pronunciation goes, she doesn't have any problems in either I English. <laughs> I have problems in English now. She doesn't have problems in either English or French, but she speaks French with an American accent, especially when she's learning like new words. That's what her teacher said at school. Her accent's pretty good. It's pretty much like a native French speaker. She is technically a native French speaker, but when she's learning a new word, she says it with an American accent first before she's fully integrated it, before she's used to saying it on a regular basis, which was kind of funny. I was really scared that she would have a really hard time with teaching her English and that she would speak French much better because she's surrounded constantly by French people but because I do a lot of like reading with her at home, all of her stories are in English. Whenever she watches cartoons and I'm home, they absolutely have to be in English. And so that's been kind of her dominant language for the moment. But that might balance out, especially when she starts learning reading and writing at school in French. That could all change. My son, Isaac, he's only a year and a half. His vocabulary is very limited at this point. He understands English and French both very well whenever we ask him to do things in English or French. He has no problem understanding what we're saying, so that's great. His comprehension in both languages is perfectly fine. He has said maybe four or five English words so far, and one French word the other day, he said chaussure, which means shoes, and I was like, yeah, you got it, buddy, you got it, a French word. I was pretty excited. I also think he says a lot of words that just aren't really well articulated yet, and we, we don't really know what he's saying, but it's actually a word from either language. That's kind of how Amelia learned to it first. We're like, oh, I don't know what she's saying. Like, it's neither French nor English, and then we realized, oh yeah, yeah, that is English. She's just not pronouncing the end of the word correctly, or like, that is is French it's just not really easy to understand yet but we'll get there they'll get there it's all gonna be fine something that I have been not really worried about but something I've kept in mind that we can't quite evaluate yet and it's important to keep in mind for bilingual children as much as you keep in mind for monolingual children it's um, speech delays and pronunciation problems you know the classic in English is when kids have trouble saying like their TRs and so instead of saying truck they say yeah, those little problems like that. I talked to Amelia's teacher to ask her if she had any problems like that with pronunciation in French, and she said for the moment, no, but it's really much easier to evaluate when they're around four or five years old, because that's what, right now, they're just saying as many sounds as they can, trying to make sentences, squishing words together, and being like, what does that make? I don't know, these sounds together? I think that's what I heard last week. And once the language is acquired, and once they're speaking more fluently, even their own like language, she said four to five is a much better age to evaluate that. So with both kids, I will be keeping that in mind. I know I read about sometimes when kids are bilingual, that is a little bit of a problem, because parents are like, oh, they don't have a speech problem, it's just they're learning two languages, and and then they realize a few years later, oh yeah, they really can't pronounce their R's, so we might need to work on that when it would have been easier, you know, to practice to work on that earlier in life, that kind of a thing. Once again, not a problem right now, we have no reason to believe it'll be a problem for either of them, but it's something that I'm keeping in mind, and something if you're raising your children to be bilingual, it might be something you want to look into and check out for as their language is growing and developing. Another thing that was not asked here, but I wanted to bring up, because I've noticed it here in France, and you definitely notice it in the States, it's our attitudes toward bilingualism depending on the language language. So I've noticed that with English, the general attitude with a few exceptions is like, wow, your children are so lucky. And they keep talking about all the advantages they'll have for them in school and for jobs and everything. But languages sometimes from people that are minorities are not as well viewed, even though it has just as much of an advantage for their brain development. It could definitely help them with future careers, not even to mention the fact that being able to speak a minority language will probably help them be able to earn more money later on because let's be honest, English is great, it's wonderful to be able to speak it fluently, but a lot of people do. So being able to speak a minority language would definitely put you 
head of the competition for jobs where they need people to speak that minority language. But sadly, the society, we value these languages less. And so a lot of the feedback that these parents are getting is less, oh, wow, what a great opportunity. And oh, aren't you worried they're going to mix the two languages up when they get to school? Aren't you worried that they're never going to really become fluent in whatever the language where you're living is? And, and they tend to have quite a few more critiques about the language that they're teaching to their children, which is not fair because either way, learning a language, a second language from birth is so so great for preventing problems later on in life like memory loss, Alzheimer's, etc. And it's just so great for the little brain development, no matter what the language is. English is obviously great. A lot of people around the world speak English, but these minority languages are also incredibly important. They are not any worse for the development of your child. They bring just as many advantages. An example of this would be a person that maybe will see me walking with my daughter in a grocery store and will be like, wow, you're so lucky that you're able to speak to her in English. That's great that you're teaching her in English. But then when a family that may be speaking Arabic to their children come by, they're like, oh, they're not even trying to assimilate. They're not trying to learn the language. Why is she speaking to him in Arabic? They should be speaking French. They're in France. And we have the same thing that happens in America. You can find many, many people of Mexican descent who will tell you that they've been speaking Spanish to their children in public and been told off by complete strangers about how it was terrible that they were doing that for their children. They're in America. They need to learn English, etc. And it's really not fair because they're giving their children this incredible advantage. So when we see people speaking a second language to their children in public, no matter what the language is, please treat it the same as you would treat any other language. First of all, in the sense that it's not really any of your business. And secondly, they're doing a wonderful thing for their children. They're making it so they're able to communicate with family in different countries maybe, or maybe family even that lives in the same country that doesn't speak the main language. It's also carrying on a tradition. It's wonderful for their brains, no matter what the language is. Well, that is my little two cents on learning a second language. I have a lot of opinions, as you can see. And yeah, I think I'm gonna try to film this in French now. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.